hello. This is my review um, for uh, taking the uh, CCNP uh, ANCOR exam. Uh, this is my experience taking it. Um, I did not pass and um, I wanted to list some of the reasons I think why. Some of the things that um, I was unaware of when I went in uh, to, to get tested and to, or to take this test. And um, un unfortunately, the, if I'd known this in advance, uh, I either would have not taken the test altogether um, or I would have uh, studied uh, a little differently. Um, so a, a couple of comments uh, on the on the exam. So um, my exam was 105 questions. I uh, had 120 minutes to complete those questions. So just over one minute per question, um, which I found was really is really tight. I mean, um, I took the CCNA as well. I did not have that experience back then. 105 questions of considerable difficulty, complexity, you know, and 120 minutes is, is it's, it's pretty tough. Um, and uh, so in categorizing these questions, okay, so about one third of the questions were um, very complex. They were very long questions. So if you printed, it, printed them out, they would be like one page long. So they had the question and scenario that's like four or five lines of text. And then they had like a network layout with the routers and the subnets and the interface numbers and um, so that, and then the actual answers, usually four options. And each answer um, was probably also two lines of answer. So imagine having to read through that whole thing. That'll take you more than a minute, I would say, probably more than two altogether for those questions. Um, you know, and, 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 and then you have to, you know, not just read, but also think what is the right answer, you know. And so it was difficult. It was difficult to, to, to even read through these questions, you know. So one third of the questions was really long. And another third of the questions was also pretty long, but not quite as, you know, um, without the network layout, but just a more complex question. Um, and then there was the, the last third of the questions, which was pretty simple um, in, in terms of the, the length of the question. You know, could still be a difficult question, but you know, it doesn't take you a long time to read through one or two lines or one, three, four, you know, one, one, two or three lines, right? Um, so that was an issue for me because the, the time. Uh, I ended up, I think I didn't even answer the last two questions or so because um, by the time I only had like 10 minutes left, I was. Yeah, I was seeing, okay, I still have, you know, maybe 15 questions or something. And and I was the last, about the, about the last 15 questions, I was really uh, flying through those questions and really just trying to see if I could, trying to see if it was a question that I could immediately spot the right answer to, you know, but more often than not, it was, you know, it was, it was not a question that simple. Um, but obviously because I can't, I can't go back in questions. I was trying to get to the last ones because it could be that the last ones were actually the ones that I was really confident about, you know? Um, so there's definitely a time issue with, with these, with this exam. Uh, 
And there's also another issue that was uh, the, the type of questions. So it is expected to have some level of difficulty and complexity, of course. Um, but I did come across questions that were uh, not from the not from the Encore course. So how I know that is because so what I used to study was I used the Cisco Learning Network uh, space, which is like it's a you get a code, you buy a code, and then you get these guides, these learning guides. And so I had access to the implementing and operating Cisco Enterprise Network Core technology uh, student learning guide. That's what I used to study for this. Uh, I also used the labs um, at cll-ng.cisco.com. So I did those as well. And then I also got the boson practice tests. Um, the boson practice tests are pretty good, but they don't cover everything. And there's actually quite an emphasis on the automation and on the e e EM applet um, that it's there's there was more complexity to those questions than was in the official learning guide. And I did have an issue. I, I remember, so I don't remember uh, hardly any of the questions, of course, because it all goes by so fast. Um, but I do remember one question in particular that I knew at the time, I hadn't, I hadn't ever read this, you know, and I read through the whole learning guide for Encore. So even if I didn't know an answer, even if I wasn't really confident in an answer, I knew if I had read about it. And this thing that I, that this question, I knew I had not read, read. and it was about VRFs and about exporting routes between VRFs. And so I knew that I hadn't read that. And after the exam, I went to check in the, in the student learning guide and I also have access to the NRC student learning guide. And it was in there. It was in the NRC. It was not in the ANCOR. So they're testing people on NRC uh, content, not just on ANCOR. Um, and I, this was really one of the only questions that I've remembered. Yeah, but I'm sure that there was more, that there was more NRC questions in there. Uh, off the top of my head, I would say my impression was that there was probably about seven or so on the roundabout, like, like about, you know, seven um, uh, NRC questions in the MCOR exam. And that certainly contributed to my, uh, my failing grade. Um, there was also another question that I specifically remember uh, that uh, was about other Cisco services and products. Um, it was for the products um, umbrella and um, let's see if I can find it here. So different security products that Cisco has, right? And so Umbrella, AMP4, E, FTD, these things um, were not in the NCOR. They were not in the NCOR. They were, they're actually not even in the NRC course official learning guide either. If you search for them in the with the search magnifying glass thing, it's nothing appears for those for those Cisco um, services that they, they did ask about in the exam. So those were two questions, two specific questions that I remembered that were not in the, um, that was content that was not in the NCORE official student learning guide. So 
Um, was that the only reason I didn't pass? No, but it certainly was a contrib contributing factor. And I was not, not happy about that. Uh, particularly not happy about the lack of time um, and the having the NRC uh, material uh, um, content in, in the NCOR exam. Um, because when I go in for an NCOR exam, I want to get tested on the NCOR content, which they, in their own student learning guide, it, I read through the whole thing and, you know, I, I would expect that they're not going to ask me about things that are part of a different course. Um, I don't remember that happening in CCNA, uh, but it happened here with this, with CCMP and core. Um, so there's, there's that. And um, I'd say there's, you know, a, a big emphasis on automation. Uh, EEM applets, know your commands, stuff that's not in the student learning guide even. Um, I would say to be able to uh, answer those questions accurately, you probably need, need to have on the job experience using those, um, using those uh, commands uh, or have a, like a, you know, a, a setup at home but not just use the Cisco labs because that's what I did and it did not cover everything uh, that they then asked in terms of automation. Um, so that's my experience. Um, I personally, I'm not a fan of the exam um, because first of all, it's not exactly cheap. So if you fail it, um, it's, um, I don't know, unless your, your employer is going to give you a raise, particularly for, for passing this, for having this uh, CCMP certification, I wouldn't go. I mean, personally, I'm not going to go for it again um, because of my experience. Uh, if I had years and years of on-the-job experience with automation and Cis with Cisco and with the things that, you know, the, the NCOR covers, but also there's so many, so many uh, different uh, services that it covers, really. It's not so much about routing and switching anymore. It's about, uh, it's about their other products. It's about the SD access, SD WAN. And if you're not so much into that, if you know that you're not going to be using that anyway in your environment, um, it's, it may, may not be worth it. I don't know. Um, so yeah, my experience is, wasn't very positive. Um, because I went in for an exam and I ended up kind of being tested for two, <laughs> you know, I mean, NCOR and an RC. And it's not like the NCOR isn't already, you know, enough. It's fine. It's not too much. But if you then add also a NARSI, that's a lot. That's a lot to know for one exam. So that's why I say unless you have on-the-job experience where you do this day in and day out with the automation and all these this functionality of the router, you know, router redundancy and the, you know, DDM VPNs and, and all of that, you know, if it's not something that you work with every day, just studying it, I don't think, I don't think it's enough. So that's my experience with it. And I hope that uh, giving you a little bit of insight on, you know, the time constraints and the questions that uh, are actually from the NRC that, that, that did appear in the exam as well, uh, that, that that can help um, other people because I wish I had known uh, about that um, in advance. So good luck to y'all the exams and uh, I hope that my insight uh, 
was able to help you a little bit.